as well. And so it is a, you know, the flavor of Wall Street in the, in the, in the far right is, is coming. So the plug is uh, write down my phone number. And if, if anybody wants to, at this point, the money's been raised, we're doing our things, but we need help uh, in Albuquerque going to Ridge Lord some of these races in Bombay. So if anybody wants to write down 986 9641, that's my direct number at my office. Call me tomorrow and I will figure out how to get you guys, if anyone wants, plugged into some of these really critical legislative races in Albuquerque. It is a coin toss right now and I'm very nervous. So I hope that's okay that I brought a little partisanship into this. 986 9641. I or uh, Noel will answer the phone and we'll figure out how to get someone to <coughs> list and you can call from here or if you want to go to Albuquerque and go to door to door. It really matters. Uh, they're so concerned, they're so eager to get the legislature. They just bought 300000 more dollars worth of TV to attack uh, Democratic candidates for the legislature in Albuquerque. So not only are we seeing potential big partisanship, we're seeing our politics change. For generations, Mexico has had a nice politics. Uh, even when we have Republican governors worked across the aisle, you know, Gary Johnson did some good stuff like create the film program, right? That was Gary Johnson actually that did that. So first example that comes to mind, Gary Crothers, when he was in, he's able to work with, with, with the legislature. We're seeing a big change of all or nothing, power <laughs> above all, policy is secondary, and, and that's a very concerning and troubling thing to see our politics changing, not just the, the partisan makeup. So that's my plug. Please call me as we'll get you volunteering. <laughs> um, on the issue of the banking, I got, I can remember the night. It was right before Christmas, uh, 2009. Uh, I watched a video uh, with excerpts from It's a Wonderful Life. And it showed Mr. Potter and George Bailey. And they showed all the key scenes in the movie. It was a, uh, Website called moveyourmoney.info, which is still up. You can still see the video. And it sums it up at the end. It says, Who side are you on, Mr. Potter or George Bailey? And I thought, I'm on George Bailey's side. You know, like, I want to be with that guy. Mr. Potter, I mean, everyone knows the movie, right? You know, Mr. Potter's the horrible banker who crushes the souls of these people who live in this little town. And I don't want to be on his side. So I thought, well, how do we start responding locally to? All of the horrible things we see coming out of Wall Street. The way, and you're exactly right, I mean, the collateralized debt obligations that were constructed with the feeder being kiosks and shopping malls in Scottsdale and uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, and Phoenix, all these mortgages get put together and sold to middlemen in Kansas City and turned into collateralized debt obligations, sold on Wall Street, and you have these insurance contracts that are really bad, credit default swaps. And the whole thing comes tumbling down because there were unscrupulous bankers and their front men getting people to sign up for mortgages that they never should have had in the first place because they had a huge demand for more mortgages to fuel this uh, desire to create huge profits in a very, very short period of time, all built on a uh, structure that they designed to fail. And I thought, well, that's terrible, but I'm only in the state legislature, so what do we do about it? First of all, I thought, well, we have a couple billion dollars in the state's checkbook. Let's take it out of Bank of America and put it into our community banks and credit unions all over the state. And we almost got there. It uh, passed unanimously in the House, got to the floor of the Senate, uh, would have passed, but it was not called up for a vote. Hmm. Uh, so we came back next time, and uh, two things happened. There was the 2010 election in between, and we had a new governor, and the banks decided that they had the political capital now that they could lobby against this bill. Whereas before, they took a neutral position, and we absolutely had the support of the independent community bankers in New Mexico. Uh, now everything sort of changed. The independent guys were scared uh, because so much of their credit is tied up in their relationships with the larger banks. Uh, also, the Federal Reserve is actually a private entity. The shares are owned by private banks, and they sort of would tell you privately, well, we don't really want to piss off these huge banks because the overnight window of the Federal Reserve is kind of controlled by them, and we don't want to lose access to that. They were neutral, and the first day of the session, state of the state, uh, we walk out of the chamber, and the uh, Bankers Association, which are the 
big banks in New Mexico, New Mexico Bankers Association, hired a new lobbyist, came right up to me, goes, this is your bill, Egolf. I said, hi, how are you? And he threw it at me, and he said, it's dead. And I said, well, let's see. And sure enough, I go to my first committee, and Peter Worth tells a story, I kind of steal it from him. Um, you know, there's this room full of my best friends in black suits, and the uh, bill goes down the flames. And I got two votes. And this is the same bill that passed unanimously. So I knew that something had changed. Um, so we worked on that, and we worked on a state bank idea, which was even more uh, ambitious, but it was stealing an idea from North Dakota. And about 100 years ago, they decided in the legislature there that they were tired of their family businesses and small farms being foreclosed on by folks whose addresses were in Boston and New York. So they said, we're going to capitalize our own banking lunch our own folks and reap the benefits of having a really locally invested in a locally thriving economy. And it is thrived. It's so popular that the current governor of North Dakota had never held office before, but he was the president of the Bank of North Dakota, and the governor was elected in a landslide. Because everybody that has a little farm borrows money from the Bank of North Dakota, and it works really well. So we tried to bring some of that here. We tailored it in a way so not to compete with our community banks, because obviously the state and I have no desire to put these guys out of business. They do good work. I'm a customer of Los Alamos National Bank. Uh, and we thought, let's bring this figure away to help the community banks that are helping our communities with the state's resources. And so the idea was to have kind of a hybrid, where the state would partner with community banks, and that was well defined, so that we're sure it's only locally owned small banks. So that if somebody comes in and wants to make a, a take out a loan, uh, because of the federal rules and regulations, if the local bank's not able to make all of the loan, then they can partner with the state and have the loan funded. And it was designed so that it would be bottom-up, so you wouldn't have politicians doing top-down, saying, this is my buddy over here, and I want you to give a bunch of state dollars to this guy. The way it worked is all the loans would originate from individuals going to the banks who would vet it and then approach the state. Um, we had, uh, we failed to get the endorsement of the community banks by one vote uh, in their committee, and of course the national guys hated it. We approached the uh, legislature, and with her governor, who had already said that she would never sign such a thing, it was hard for me to get colleagues to get on board on this, for New Mexico, kind of a, you know, a, a, a big departure from the norm. So it was a fun debate, and uh, we did succeed in passing it. So, so far, this is a story of failure. Uh, but I learned a couple of things, which is we got to think, if, if we want to be pragmatic, I, there's, there's some pragmatism that needs to be added to this. If we really want to get something passed, and we've got to figure out what the goals are for passage. Part of it was it'd be nice to do a little payback to these huge banks that almost took the entire global economy off the cliff. But I think that should be secondary to how do we use some of these state resources to really help our local businesses. I mean, it's fun to ding city group, but realistically, it's a tiny, tiny ding from the Mexico legislature. There are losses. Here's the one perspective here. This, this loss that J.P. Morgan had a few months ago, okay, uh, $2 billion or so, that's a little less than half our state budget. Okay, uh, So we don't have the ability to really make notice to them. What we can do is leverage our resources and our wealth as a state to help the folks that pay the taxes and that do the work in their base here. So I started looking around and we've got this great thing this is coming to the finance authority. Now, the finance authority, I know, has gotten its fair share of bad press over the last several months because of an audit that was faked. There was an employee, you don't exactly know why, uh, there was an employee who, instead of having a new audit done, took the 2010 audit and cut and paste and put a new cover sheet on it and said, this is the 2011 audit. And they all approved it, and that was that. Well, that guy's uh, been arrested and indicted. And there's a few people uh, who were also arrested and not indicted. And there's a big investigation. We'll find out in a few weeks what was really going on with the audit. It's important to keep in mind that during all of this controversy, the credit rating of the New Mexico Finance Authority has stayed AAA. In spite of this, which is pretty amazing. What it does, the Finance Authority, it takes all these little projects all on the same. So you might have up in Rantong, they want to put new sidewalks on our main street. It's a couple million dollar project, way too small for Raton to go on 
up to the national, international bond market and bond for that. It's way too tiny, no one would do it. You might have uh, in Albuquerque, uh, River Crossing Project is a few million dollars. Uh, down in Socorro, you want to have the plaza of Socorro be done. All these little projects that on their own are too small and are not included for whatever reason in the local bond offerings. Well, what happens is they all get put together. They all come to the finance authority, they all say, this is a project we want to do. The finance authority gets it, put them all in a package together, and then there's one bond that they offer nationally, and the money comes into the finance authority, and they give the money back out to the local government so they can do the projects, and then those loans are repaid from a little bit of gross receipts tax. It's worked perfectly. They've never had a loan default from one of the local governments, and the rates that the local governments get are way lower than what they would do, even if they did a county or a big municipal bond. So the model has worked, and it's worked since, I think it was started in the early 90s, I don't know exactly the year, so it's got a pretty good track record, in spite of this recent difficulty. They also have a program, which is very tiny, where they do basically seed money or a little bit of capital investment in New Mexico-based businesses, but it's only about $10 million right now. So the effort that we're going to try this next session, and given the controversy of finance authority, this is where I really need some help, uh, is to try and expand what the finance authority can do with those funds. So the idea here is to look at the finance authority as what it really is, which is a state development bank. But the development lending is limited to governmental entities counties and cities primarily. You know, sometimes like a water authority you'll get thrown in there or a uh, flood district, but mostly it's these little uh, cities and counties. So it is a development bank. We can expand the mission to look at the same types of lending that I was hoping to get with the state bank in New Mexico. To look at if you were if you were uh, locally owned and operated with physical presence in New Mexico institution, then if you're able to partner with the local Community bank as defined in the, uh, in the statutes. That bridge funding, instead of coming from a new state development bank, would come instead from a segment of the fund established in the finance authority. You look very skeptical sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to convince you uh, this is okay. Um, and, uh, and so the idea would be take what we have and try and instead of making a huge leap, tiptoe to where we want to end up, which is at the end of the day, state resources being used to avoid the need for so many of our small businesses to go to Wells Fargo and Bank of America and U.S. Bank and Bank of Albuquerque, which is actually Bank of Oklahoma and a much larger institution, to try and get those guys out of the picture a little bit so we can keep state of New Mexico money in New Mexico working for New Mexicans, because after all, it's our money to begin with. That's the general idea. So give up. So, yeah. so yeah. So here, you know, I'm, I'm kind of giving up for a little bit on this big bank of New Mexico concept. But at the end of the day, if the, res if the results are the same, then I think that's good, and it will show people that we can actually do this in a way that is fiscally responsible and comes up with a good product at, uh, at the back. Uh, so that's where we're headed with this upcoming session. Now I can say if we lose the election, right, and if we have a Republican speaker, uh, none of this is going to happen. But so that's why these elections really make a difference. But if we hold control and if we're able to get some members of the other party to join on to this idea, and by the way, the eastern side of New Mexico, we have all, a lot of these farms, and we've got really good, independent-minded Republican legislators coming in, like this guy Pat Woods, who was elected as a Republican senator in spite of a huge onslaught from the governor and all of her political machine, he's someone that we could work with on this. And his type of legislator would be great to have on this because of the ability to do agricultural lending without these guys having to sell their soul to Bank of America and cahoots with ConAgra. So there's, there's some potential here for that. And I don't know, I guess I might, I'm probably supposed to stop there. Maybe we'll keep an A or? Yeah, okay. Not First of all, the main thing.